my rise to stardom was not the players in the industry, no. And everybody was like, okay, you've called this guy, let's see what this guy can do. Something funny happened. I was supposed to wear my clothes, but they said they were gonna give me costume. As soon as I wore the costume, I started sweating. My body started itching. I couldn't even talk. Wonderful Honest Listeners, welcome to another exciting episode of Honestly Speaking, the only show where you ask us to bring any of your favorite celebrities to answer questions that have been bugging you and we make sure they answer honestly. Today's guest is a crowd favorite. He is a philanthropist, he is an actor, he is a movie director and your future president. When we return, Prince David Osei takes the honest seat. If I want to go out, I'll drive my own car. Besides, I don't take orders from you. Now get back there and get me a car, now. Yes, madam. How dare you? I heard all that you said to old Pedro. Let this be the first and the last time you ever speak so disrespectfully to him. Here we all take orders from him. And with pleasure, one more wrong move towards him and you find yourself in the slums where you rightly belong. What insolence? I guess I have to discuss this with Papa. Old Bedou, I'm deeply sorry. <sighs> so how often do you go on a play date? Well, I have been hibernating for a while now. You brought me out of my cage. What does it take to tame you? I don't want to be tamed. But you're tameable. I'm not some house cat, no. I want more than just a play date. Where are you going? Play date is over. If you want someone to stay in your playhouse, you should visit the church. There are lots of women there nagging God for that role. Okay, come on, come on, Abba. Let's get back to the play mood. Steve, I have a short attention span and it takes a lot to hold me down. Please, come on. Welcome back, this is Honestly Speaking, and Prince David Osei, our future president, the future president of Ghana, <laughs> is here and you know he's ready to have a candid conversation. Welcome to the Thank show, you. welcome to the set. It's a pleasure having me here. Okay, you're looking dapper, you're looking very nice. Thank you. Your watch you're is given. Oh, hey, really? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, how are you? How is how is today? Uh, today is hot. The sun is really smiling. So. But the wind, the, the air is kind of blowing, though. So. Uh, the air is oh, blowing. It's, it's, here. it's humid. Right. Well, just here at the beach. When you go out there, it's hot. Yeah, right. Okay, and I believe this is our first conversation. Like, yeah, you know, first I time know you. you. I've you known know me? you. Yes, I, not personally, but oh, okay. From I've afar. seen you. Yes. So Do I look I'm, like a good guy? You look like a respectable man. Oh, thank you. Yeah, like you look that. like you look like a respectable man. Thank so thank that's you. that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, t please tell me a little bit about yourself, your childhood, growing up, um, school. Okay. Parents. <laughs> so I grew up from a very humble background. Uh, okay. I was born at the regional hospital. Okay. Uh, grew up in Kokomemle. I have Seco, heard of Kokomemle, Kokomemle right. Tiptolin. Nima, you know, those okay, yeah. environments. And uh, um, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Dennis Ose. Okay. Uh, I grew up like a normal kid in, uh, in the area, you know. Growing up was kind of tough because um, my mom kept traveling, my dad kept traveling. So sometimes I and my siblings, you know, have to fend for yourselves. Not in really a way. fend for ourselves. We depend on uh, our auntie, my mother's younger sister, to take care of us. She's also got kids, so right. sometimes you know, overwhelming. Attention, yeah, you got to do stuff for yourself. Like a seven-year-old boy having to wash his clothes, and you know, mm. sometimes you have to wake up early, go to school. I went to Dion State International School, okay. uh, the one behind Joy FM, okay. and um, that's for my primary. And I went to Accra High for my secondary and um, for tertiary education was Legon, uh, University of Ghana Legon School of Performing Arts. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. 
basically that's about that's it that's my childhood yeah. childhood i was i was stubborn Let me that. <laughs> I, was, I was a deviant i was very stubborn you know play football the whole day sometimes I leave the house as early as um, 9 a.m when my father goes to work and come back home like 8 p.m can you imagine I roam around the whole street. So did you get lashing? Oh, beatings in the head. <laughs> and <they're> normal. <laughs> Sometimes I dread to come back home because every day they will beat me. Yeah. Every day. If it's not my mom, it's my dad. At a point, I thought they didn't like me. Oh, no. And I think they were preparing me for something ahead of my life. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Right. And so when did we develop a passion for acting? Because you did study... Um, you, in university, you did media yeah, ads. So, yeah. was it something that was done in um, high school? So no, since you were actually, I did science in high school. Okay. I did sciences, physics, elective maths, um, chemistry. Okay. Yeah, but um, I think it's something that I had in me as a kid. I used to do a lot of enactments. I used to act on my own. I used to mimic people. I used to just do it freestyle. And um, at church. Uh, Royal House Chapel now. By then, it was um, IBWC. Okay. Uh, around Coco Memory, ATTC. I used to go there. I used to act in the children's department. I used to act in the uh, church. So, it's something I do, like, freely. It was more like a hobby. Uh, when I completed SS, I applied to tech to do engineering. I didn't get the admission. Then, um, I just switched to art. I said, okay, let me go to Legon. Uh, so I had uh, theater art, I had um, social psychology, and uh, I fell in love with the theater art. I was always at the theater art department, school of performing arts. I was doing stage plays. I did almost everything on campus with regards to acting, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so from there on, how did we get into the movie scene? Okay, so the movie scene, I think this is before Lagon, I used to watch the Nigerian movies. I used to watch TV and... Uh, Sometimes when I'm watching, I tell my siblings that I can do better than this guy. I can do better than that guy. One day I'm going to be there and say, oh, you're a shy person. How can you act if you're shy? Because growing up, I used to be very shy. So I think back to Legon, uh, Ivan and his team, Ivan Koshiga and his team came to Legon to audition for cast. I think they were doing TVCs, commercials and right. stuff. So I happened to find myself there and I was selected to do a TVC. Uh, for Ghana Social Marketing Foundation, okay. a condom ad. So that was the first major thing I did on TV. As soon as I did that thing, I became popular on campus. And um, when I'm picking a torture or taking a taxi, people could point yeah. to me, oh, boy, we are collaborating on your condom ad. And that was the first time I was experiencing Fandom. what they call fame yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I wasn't prepared for I wasn't used to it. And remember those times I used to take torture. So then I had to upgrade and start taking taxi because everybody knew me on campus yeah. and you know i didn't want to spoil the brand <laughs> like, okay you know, we saw you on tv and you're taking trotters so i started taking taxi i couldn't eat at the cafeteria oh wow so now i can't buy my kinky and oh no pepper and the gobe so what i do is i send my roommates they go and buy because one time i was in the queue at central cafeteria i was buying kinky and there was a tv set in the dining hall all of a sudden the advert came on no way <laughs> and unfortunately for me i was alone uh, oh my god it was a terrible day yeah now i wanted the ground to just split open so everyone yes. was looking at a guy in here he's another guy he's another guy so finally i took my food came to my room and this is the yeah, last i'm doing this is the last time I'm going, but today i go with my friends so so that's where it started after the tvc um ivan gave me my maiden role on the screen um, for Fortune Island. Okay. It was big. But then there was Maji, there was uh, uh, Nadia, even Nelson, uh, Oscar Professor, the late Kwame Uso and Sir, uh, Vivian Acho, Kofi Ajololo. And I was new. Mm -hmm. Like I was in their midst and I was playing the lead and I wasn't really ready for it, but you know, you had to. Given me the role, <laughs> I had to play it. So that was the beginning. That's how I started from us. And then that's what just propelled. So you. after that one, uh, there was a break for some time. I completed Legon. And just when I was completing Legon, uh, this Nigerian producer came to town. Uh, I've forgotten their name, but the woman's name was um, Greg Odutayo. The Odutayos. They wanted to do a series which had four casts, okay. two guys and two girls. Right. So that's where we went for auditions and they chose myself and 
Beverly Afaglo. It was it was me, John Beverly Afaglo, and um, uh, I'm about to wed. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to, to wed. Okay. Yeah. So that was the first thing that people really saw myself and John on screen. It was being aired on TV three and uh, Net two. At then, hi Net two. Yeah, at that time. So that was what gave us the the notoriety. A lot of people got to know us through that because it was big in Nigeria. We did over a hundred and something episodes. Wow. Yeah, after shooting wow. that one, yeah, that was what propelled us into the Nigerian market. They saw myself, the soldier, so we started going to Nigeria. That was like 2008, nine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's how I began. Right. And so I mentioned earlier that you are also a, a film producer. Okay. It's something I've always wanted to do. So far, I have to my credit, four movies uh, in a series. Uh, the first one was um, Last Night. Last Night was the a one cast movie I did. It was directed by Andy Boyle. Uh, it's the first of its kind from Africa, a movie that has just one person as a character. Uh, it won a lot of awards in Egypt, in Nigeria, wow. in Canada. Congratulations. In yeah. we, we toured with the movie, um, Canada, uh, Calgary are better. We did premieres all over, and it was it was massive. It was, it was just a big me deal. in the movie. Wow! Yeah, yeah. and uh, I produce uh, other TV series, Tarima, and uh, presently I produced a movie which is a gospel, like a movie gospel movie, with my friend in um, Colorado. It's called um, PM Films. Efo uh, Efo um, Caleb. He stays right. in America. We it's a Christian movie that we produced together. I played the role of a pastor. Uh, we shot it in 2020. Right. Just when we are about to premiere, COVID came. So we kept it in the back for some time, but this yeah. year we are going to premiere it. Right, yeah. right. And then I mentioned as well that you're a philanthropist and our next president. Yeah. No, not next, future. Our future, some sorry. Hey, future, hey, let yeah. me be clear. The I timing, beg you. They don't have to know the I timing. I beg you. Before they future kill me. president, yeah. not the next. I, I don't want to wake up. Yeah, I don't no, wake up. No, they'll just anymore. wake up and they'll see me as a president. Go like, yeah. ah, how did you tell you what happened? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, how do we get into philanthropy? Is it something you've always oh, I mean, coming, wanted to do? Coming from a humble background, you know, if you've been hungry before, when you see someone that is hungry, the person don't necessarily have to ask you for money. You can tell that. Right. So I've been doing a lot of philanthropic work. There's this um, orphanage that I support at um, Dodoa, right. Potter's Village Orphanage. And uh, I have a foundation, PDO Foundation. I've had it since 2011. I've been doing a lot of humanitarian stuff, sharing food, aids, paying for people's students' school fees, some Legon, some Takrade uh, Polytechnic, some UCC. I've been doing that on a low. I mean, I. I get a lot of relish in doing that. Right, yeah. right. And so have you taken your uh, philanthropical activities outside of the nation or? Oh, in Ghana, we've done a lot. You know, I've been looking out for the Kaye. The last right. time I fed over 5,000 people Ooh. from Nima to Tema Station oh, wow. to Agu Blushi. I have the visuals there <laughs> on my page on Instagram. Yeah, uh, yeah, that okay. was my last birthday. Okay. Yeah, with food, drinks. And some I give them monies, those who are. When is your next stuff. birthday? December. But ah. before then, I w I'm still going to do <laughs> I don't necessarily have to wait until yeah. it's my birthday. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. I think, you know, I think now you and I have sort of a rapport. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's keep it flowing. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> guys. Um, we're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, uh, Prince is answering all the questions that you sent him.
Welcome back. This is Honestly Speaking and Prince David Osei, our future president, is ready to answer all the questions that he sends him. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, you ready to answer honestly though, please. We don't go any bye bye. How are you gonna tell four. how are you gonna tell if I'm honest? That's why I'm asking you now so that you promise to be honest. But you said you know me. Like not personally. Yeah, I'm a very honest person. If it's hey. A, it's A. If it's B, it's B. Okay, I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. And believe I'm not afraid you. of anyone. I say yeah. that's it is. Okay, let's go. First one, Anita from Dansoman wants you to tell us about one of your biggest challenges in the industry and how you were able to overcome it. I, I won't use the word tough, but um, I don't know what I did. It's like, you know, other people, they came into the movie industry and somebody held their hand, like, right. you know, bring this person, give this person a lead role and blah, blah, blah. I just showed up. I just showed up and um, aside Ivan introducing me to TV series and all that, the movie industry itself, I just showed up. From because, nowhere. <laughs> from nowhere. So, so, because some guy was supposed to play a role at uh, Jowulu. They were filming in the eyes of my husband. And uh, the guy couldn't deliver his lines. So I think they were talking on the set. Then the producer... A Nigerian, a maker, something, I've forgotten his name, it's been long. Then he was like, oh, he knows a Legon boy who comes to audition at Afrikiko. Funny thing is, whenever I go for the audition at Afrikiko, they don't even talk to me. They don't yeah. let me read, like, to hear my voice. So I just sit there sometimes. Marta, Gloria Saf will come around, Juliet Ibrahim, they'll come around and, like, they see some nice guys. Right. So they should at least give me the shot. Nobody yeah. was minding me, so... After whatever, I'll go back to Legon. So the guy said he's seen some guy who normally sits in front. He has a nice personality. They think that guy can play Nadia's boyfriend. Right. Because the guy was not able to get his lines. Right. So they looked for my number. They searched there for the number. And I had just completed Legon. I was lying on my bed with my friend. I didn't know what life had for me. I didn't know what to do. We were just talking. Then the call came in. And the guy said, I'm a maker, producer. Can you come to Jolo right now? Then I said, what's going on there? Said they'll come and play Nadia's boyfriend. I said, okay. I'll and, do that. <laughs> and you know, I, I was on campus with Nadia, we're in the same class, so I knew Nadia. So when they said Nadia, I said, okay. So we gathered a few clothes, we got there, there were a lot of people. And um, if I say I wasn't scared, I'm lying, because the guy playing the role was standing there, they were shooting. And the director looked at me and said, oh, okay, get him into costume. Aye. They gave me this big script. But my scenes were just seven. They gave me this big script. And the Nigerian guy was like, oh yeah, I'm going go now. Hey. I've not even looked at the thing. So I glanced through the script quickly. And uh, I was like, okay. I was so scared. There were a lot of people there. And everybody was like, okay, you've called this guy. Let's see what this guy can do. So something funny happened. I was supposed to wear my clothes. But they said they were going to give me a costume. As soon as I wore the costume, I started sweating. Aye. My body started itching. Aye. I couldn't even talk. No. So the director was like, ah, I thought you said this guy can blah, blah, blah. Then I said, one minute. So I told my friend, I said, I don't know why this is happening. Normally, I'm not that kind Something, of person. Yeah. So I told them, can I use my costume? Then the lady then wasn't happy. I said, oh, I, I don't feel comfortable in there. I want to use my costume. I said, okay. So I took off their shirt, went to the washroom. Did a quick prayer, came back. So when I came back, I didn't smile, I just kept quiet. So I said, oh, we can go. As soon as they said action, I delivered my lines, and the rest is history. Then they were like, oh, this guy is good. So just after that movie, A got me on Passion and Soul. Ah. After Passion and Soul, Salam got me on, um, what's it called? Uh, the Dawns of Sakawa. So and that's then a, that's so on and so forth. Right, things. right, right, right. Um... So the challenges, now what happened was, as I rightly said, I just showed up. So some people were not happy because they were wondering who brought me and how did this guy get here? So it wasn't like they've all decided to have a meeting, but um, whenever I show up, there's this animosity, negative mm. vibe, negative energy to the extent, sometimes when they give me costume, the uh, PM will say he likes the shirt, he wants to buy it. Oh, how? Yeah, yeah, so they'll let me take it off. Costume that we're supposed to use to act. Uh, they let oh, me take how? it off. You, yeah, he wants to buy it. If they ah. pair me with a girl and the girl is nice. <laughs> oh, how? And we have to do kissing and stuff. 
some of them will be intimidating me. Oh. You know, like, making Why? it look like they caught a shot. So I kept quiet. And I do a movie sometimes. There were some of the early, earlier movies that I did. They don't even write my name. You know, like, yeah, you yeah, tell yeah, people yeah. you're in a movie and you guys are sitting down the credits are yeah, your name scrolling is, and your name is, is not, no. but you see, you see, as soon as the movie starts, we see you in the movie. Yeah. They'll take me off the poster. Sometimes ah. they'll take my body and um, my personality, like, I'm, you can see this is strange, but my head is someone else. So, that was what was going on. Uh, like, you know. Why? But I, I was never perturbed because I knew what I had. So, when the Nigerians picked me up real quick, and I started doing Nigerian movies going, then they didn't have a choice. Of course. But to call me, and one thing I'm very grateful for is Ghanaians. My rise to stardom was not the, the players in the industry. No. It was Ghanaian. They just loved me. The street loved me. You know, back in the days, they used to sell our movies in traffic. Yes. You see them having the yes, posters. Yes, with the CDs yeah, and all of CDs. that. <laughs> it was really selling. Because when I'm driving in traffic, I interact with them. I, you know, I vibe with them. So... Mainly it was the streets. The producers and the people that were calling the shot then didn't like me. But they didn't have a choice but to call me. Because the, because the, street, the audience the loved wanted. you, yeah. 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 Right, right. So that's how come um, I went through all that, but um, I put it behind me now because now I call the shot. You right. can call me for a movie, tell me who I'm playing with. I can tell you, no, I don't like this person. Let's use the other the, person. The person. That's power in your hands. Power in your hands, right. Yeah, grace, grace. It's called right. grace. Uh, next, Anita still wants to know some of the things you've observed in filmmaking since you've been starred in movies across the world. This Anita. Oh. Yes, Anita. Anita. <laughs> um, I notice in the field of acting, if you don't have it, you don't have it. It's you have to be passionate about the craft, about what you do, in order to excel. If you are not passionate about it, you won't excel. It's not about the money. It's like a stimulus, something that gives you joy. You know, I've like shooting with a lot of people all over the globe. You see, they are passionate about the job. It's not really about the money they are going to get. They are passionate. Yeah, so people love, will go yeah. extra mile to do stuff for production, to bring characters to life. The cinematographers and stuff will even climb a tree just to take a shot. Wow. So if you are not really... Um, Align with this kind of vibes, you can't excel in the movie right. industry. It's not about speaking English <laughs> or looking beautiful or looking handsome. No, it goes beyond that. Right. You should have the passion in you. It should be intrinsic. You know, you, sh you should just have it. Don't look at someone and say, okay, because this person has done movie and got money or got fame, and you think you are better looking than the person or you think you can speak good English and you are fluent, so that should make you act, then you miss it. It's uh, it's a serious business, and uh, movie making is our passion. You just right. have to have the passion. Right, yeah. right. Next, um, Papa from Kaswa wants to know your all-time favorite Ghanaian musician and why. Do I have one? You should know. Papa, I'm sorry, I don't. What? Yeah. I really? Is it that you don't like Ghanaian music, or you just don't? You can't choose or can't pick I, one. I love Ghanaian music, uh, but I can. Say all time. No, I love Stone Boy. I love um, Shatwale. I love um, what's his name? Uh, Black Hole. Mm. You know, this this are the yeah. young vibes. Can promise and call. Yeah. If yeah, but I don't have an all time. I don't have a goat. Right. You know what a goat is? Like the greatest of, of all, all time. time. Yeah, yeah. I don't have all time favorite. Uh, right. I love Daddy Lumba. Okay. Uh, Kujunchi, uh Iron Boy. Uh, but I don't, I don't have a favorite. Right, yeah. right. Fair enough. Yeah. Next, Nanadra from Awashi wants you to tell us the role you would like to play if you were casted in a movie alongside John Dumelo. <laughs> <laughs> if I was cast alongside John Dumelo, I yes. want to play a drug baron. So he's going to be on the other side. So would you be like the antagonist? Yes, I'd love to be okay, the antagonist. And he's mess him be up. The, yeah, mess okay. Consignment of, and okay. you know. <laughs> I think that would be such a fun movie. Yeah, Why don't you guys work on it, no? We'll work on it after yeah? the election. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, next, now from Mamprobi is asking, if you weren't a famous actor, what do you think you would be doing instead? I'd have been a footballer. Okay. Because I'm 
on the path of becoming a lawyer. So I'd have been a footballer. I've always loved to play football. So are you really good at it? Are you good? Oh, I, I used to be very good. But you just um, stopped practicing? You no, know, what happened was when we were kids at Coco Melanie, we used to play um, this small, small course ball, yeah. whatever. And uh, what, the reason I stopped playing was uh, normally when we are going to play match as kids, they take the jerseys and they put incense in mm. it and I didn't like the smell. So I started, you know, I was complaining every time that uh, it's just football. Let's play football. Because at an early age of eight, nine, why should I be wearing something with, uh, what's it called? Insects and uh, I, So yeah. I noticed it was on the path of juju and stuff. I wasn't yeah, interested. No, 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 no. It's just football. Yeah. yeah so that's I how come I stopped. Okay, yeah. Next, now again wants you to tell us your all-time favorite Ghanaian movie and why. All-time favorite Ghanaian yes. movie? Yes. Is my movie, Supremo. Okay. That's the, the first lead role I ever got in a movie. The yeah, first lead role. I was the president's son and I really brought the character to life. Uh, that, those were some of the movies that really gave me the fame I needed at that time because I stood alone. It was me, Jackie, and John. On, John and Jackie on the other side. And I was standing alone, and I did justice to it. So, Supremo. Right. Yeah. Fair. Jason from Adan wants um, you to tell us what it means for you to be named a top African actor and a role model. You know, at the, at the Just Ended Awards where you won um, the award. I think it's by the grace, it's by the grace of God, because um, we've been in this industry close to, I think professionally, I started acting professionally from 14 Island in 2005. Yeah, that's a long time ago. So, if I'm not mistaken, that's like 19 years. Uh, 2005. Yeah. 2020. 24. So, 24. that's 19 years, right? Hi. Yeah, that's a long Why time ago. Why did I think we're in 2020? No, you're going back. We're moving <laughs> forward. So, you know, I, I've, I've been around, and um, as I rightly told you from the beginning of this interview, they didn't want me in. You know, they kept pushing me out, shutting the door at me, but here we are. And, um, through the influence and the um, grace of God, I've been able to mentor a lot of people. I've been able to shape a lot of upcoming actors. I've been able to give back to society. So it's a privilege to be named among the top Africans and uh, receiving that award was, uh, was fulfilling. Right, yeah. right. Congratulations Thank again you. on that. Such a wonderful feat to achieve. Next, Jason again wants you to tell us about one of the craziest fun encounters you've ever had. So, craziest fun encounters. like Fun know, encounter? Yeah, the craziest. You sure you want to hear Yeah, it? why not? This is honestly speaking. You want us to be honest? Yes, be honest. So, you weren't being honest this whole time? No, no, because this, this okay. one, this one. You have to be honest. It's not good for TV. No, no. You, it's okay? You can... No, articulate I told the words. No, no, I'm very even, assertive. I okay, express say it. myself. Say it. Okay. okay, so I was, in, I, was, <laughs> I was in New York. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I was in New York many years ago, and um, I was working with a lady. We were actually going to a shop to buy stuff. I was a gas station. Right. So I heard someone calling my name. Prince, Prince, Prince. This lady, she was so excited. Ghanaian lady in and uh, bronze. So she was shouting, Prince, 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 Prince. So we stopped. I and the lady stopped and, um, you know, she wanted a hug. So when she hugged me, she held me very tight. And there was like 10 a.m. or so. So I don't know if it's the boyfriend or husband or whoever came out of the car. Hey. The guy was approaching where we were. Hey. It was just a fine thing. She was still held on to me. I mean, there was nothing I could do. Yeah. So. I was trying to be nice, and the guy came closer, and what he said will shock you. Eh? Prince, 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 where is another boy with you? Oh. Sorry, you said I should be honest. No. So when he said that, the American girl I was working with was so pissed. Yeah. She understands she, but she was born. She's like, Desperate. What, what's the meaning of all this? Why are you embarrassing yourself so much? Why are you doing that? Then I, I looked at him, then I said, big man, and you'll be a onama. Yeah. Go for girls and yeah. Obi, Obi, you. Yeah. You're embarrassing at, your woman. At the I end don't know. of the day. Yeah, so I said that to him, and then the woman said, Boy, I'm not going to rough off. Then. 
Hey, the two of them are meant yeah, for each so other. We, we left we left <laughs> to the store and they went their way. Yeah. The other worst encounter was me, Majid, and James. <laughs> in Enugu, we we're filming there and we went to this club. When we got to the club, you know, people were dancing and having fun. Then this girl called Chidima. I don't know. <laughs> people were holding on to Majid, James, and Norma. This girl held me tight, pushed me on the wall. She was holding me. They were dragging her, bouncers. Everybody was telling her it's okay. Her boyfriend came to pull her. Oh, the girl said no. She was holding on to me like that. What did she want? <laughs> So it wasn't funny. I was trying to let go. No, she pushed me to the wall. She hold my chest. I like. So now the boyfriend was tired. Of course. So people weren't happy at the club. Then the next moment we had bottles popping. Pop, pop, pop. So we had to run. Me, my G, James we went through the back door. They were telling us to work. Come pass here, pass here. It was crazy. Like <laughs> the boys were like, we are from Ghana and um, we've come here. We want to I take their girls. Oh, and how? It was, it was crazy. So we, we had to. Use the no, back no, door. That, that girl could have really messed it up. Go into the producer's car, and uh -oh. you know, and we we left. It, it was a it was a terrible evening. That is crazy. Yeah. I feel like that is one of the craziest stories that we've had. You've heard so far. Yeah. Right. Next, Caleb from East Legon wants to know the advice you would give to your younger self starting out in the industry. I would tell myself to be patient, not be in a mad race, not just jump on any production at all, uh, because. Um, Coming up, we did some productions that when we look back, we shouldn't have done it if we had someone advising us or someone, you know, mentoring us or stuff like that. So I would advise my old self, my younger self, to be patient, to, you know, be steadfast, go through the process and be careful of uh, the kind of productions one gets into. Right, right. Caleb again wants to know if you have ever regretted campaigning for any political party in Ghana. I wouldn't say regret, but I would say I disagree with some of the policies and implementations. I wouldn't say regret uh, because whatever I do, I do it, whatever consequence that comes with it, I face it head on. So I wouldn't say regret, but I would say disagree with some policies. And uh, in as much as, um, let's say I'm with you, if you do something wrong, I can't keep shut. It's just my temperament. I, I can't help it. I have to I have to say it to your face or say it as it is. Right, so, right. No regrets. Right. Okay. Jeff from Kumase wants to know if you have any message for Ghanaians towards the upcoming elections. Oh, future from president. Kumase. Yes, from Kumase. Okay, so um, it's an election year. I would say this. Love your neighbor as thyself. It, right. Uh, it's an election. So do you let others do them. Don't go fighting anyone. Don't go pulling out machete or guns in the name of you want your candidate to win or whatever. Because the truth of the matter is some of those people who go into vandalism and all that stuff, yeah. when who, whoever comes to power, they don't even know you. You will not even get the opportunity of meeting them. Yeah, mine you might end up losing your life, dying. If you want to support a particular political ideology, free go ahead and support it right uh next van from mampong says corruption is a major concern for many Ghanaians. but in your opinion what can be done to hold those in power accountable to reduce corruption after this we have the last one in next really? segment. yes so corruption is like a conquer it's it's everywhere right. it's in the church 100 percent. it's in the school it's in families it's everywhere now there's something people forget the mp that is in parliament right now. Comes from a family, comes from a home, has brothers and sisters. If I'm a thief, by nature, I'm a liar. When I get into parliament, you think I'm gonna change? That's who I am. Yeah. So if you're corrupt from the onset, any the slightest opportunity you get, you see money, you want to embezzle. Of course. So people should change their perception, their way of thinking. People should have respect and have value for being given the opportunity and the chance to serve. If you are a president, if you are a vice, if you are a minister, Ghana is about 32 million people. It's a privilege that you've been called to represent your community or group of people in parliament. It's not like you deserve it. There are people that could be better than you right. by just a privilege. So when you go there, you should understand you are working for the people, not for yourself. You work for the people. A good leader is someone who serves. So if you are serving and you know fully where that this thing that I'm, 
abusing is going to affect the country, then you don't do it. Right. Uh, final question. Mami Esi wants to know if you would ever consider running for a political office and why. We know the oh, answer. Oh, Mami Esi, <laughs> it's a calling. We're already in it. A lot of people insult me on social media. Well, why I'm, though? I'm, why do they insult you? Because, no, because you... they like me. Oh. <laughs> and they don't like maybe where I stand. But right. it's all love. Right. Uh, I don't take it personal. Right. When I see some of the comments, I just laugh. It's a way of nurturing me for what is ahead. Now I know how people think. So when I become, so when I'm president, it won't shock me. Because I know people will talk, people will insult you. Right. But if you have a vision and you know where you're going, you stay focused and... Um, you keep it going. So my is yes, I'm into politics now, and uh, it's going watch to get out. better. Yeah, watch out. Yeah. Right, guys, uh, we're going on a quick Finally, break. No, yeah, we're done. No, with, with the questions, but we're moving on to rapid so fire. So, Bayern or Real Madrid? Um, hey, <laughs> guys, who should I choose? No, do? you should have just said one. Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Hey, I love Madrid. Hey, yeah. hey, so I'm, I'm going to bet on that it, for I'm you. It. If like I lose, you're in trouble. Ding, ding. <laughs> Guys, we are going on a break. <laughs> when we get back, Prince is in Hola. the rapid fire seat and he's answering all the questions. Ching, ching, ching. Welcome back. This is Honestly Speaking and Prince David Osei is in the rapid fire seat. He's ready to answer all the rapid fire questions that you sent him Okay. right now. Yes, uh, let's go. Let's wrap it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. All right. First, would you rather give up social media for a year or never eat your favorite food again? Never eat my favorite food again. Okay, so social media is... All right. Would you rather have a loyal following in Ghana or a massive international fan base? Loyal following in Ghana. Right. Those are your people. Yeah, my people. Right. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have... Uh, would you rather fight a talking parrot or a dancing goat? <laughs> Don't ask me any question. Just answer. <laughs> <laughs> a talking parrot. Or a dancing goat. <laughs> Talking parrot. A talking parrot. Why? Dancing good. Because I love to talk, so we can then talk. Yeah, you guys can. Okay, all right. Uh, would you rather solve Ghana's energy crisis or stabilize uh, the Ghana city? Stabilize. Well, hold on. Solve the energy crisis or, or stabilize? stabilize the um, Ghana city? Well, when when there's stability of um, the currency, everything is solved. Right, right. Uh, would you rather write a love song inspired by Ifia or compose a diss track for a rival actor inspired by Manifest? Boom, boom, bye. A love song inspired by fear. Okay. Why you don't have any beef in the industry? You don't have anybody that you want to fight? Uh, I, do I have time? Mine okay. is the road. Right. Woman, you know. Going to presidency. We don't have time don't to have be. time for negative Thank energy. You. Thank <laughs> you. Next, would you rather win a lifetime supply of fufu or a lifetime supply of gobe? I'll go with gobe. Oh, fufu. Last nah. time Calibos was here, we chose Fufu. Calibos love Fufu, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So Gobe is the way. Gobe beans. Okay, no With problem. With small rice on the side. No problem. I feel like a beer. And then you add some egg. Okay. With some With sprinkle, some small razzle fish. dazzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, would you rather win a prestigious award or have your fan love your work unconditionally? Have my fun, love my work unconditionally. unconditionally right. Uh, would you rather be known for acting or your philanthropic work? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm, spicy, dicey. Uh, this one is close. Yeah. Um, I'd rather be known for my talents. Right. So, for Which acting. is acting. Yeah. Right. Uh, Last but one, would you rather teach a master class in acting or in filmmaking? Acting. Acting, right. Last one, would you rather speak perfect tree or perfect fante? I said to anybody, so I need to. Right? Tree. 
Right. Okay. Okay. There you go. That's too your soon answer. To the end no, of this stop. Episode. Stop. Let me do my thing. Let okay, me do my thing. All too soon. Ah, we have come to the end of this episode of Honestly Speaking. Thank you. Before I let you go, is there anything that you want to share with the fans? Anything that you're working on? Anything that you want to say? 11th of May, okay. Resonance premiering at the Silverbed Cinema. Myself, Fela Makafui, Anthony Wood, Peter Ritchie, Sinari. And a host of other wonderful actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you there, eleventh May. What did I say? Yeah, yeah, Buy yeah. What's your say? You're hundred Ghana cities. Okay. Right, yeah. guys. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Honestly Speaking. Um, very special thank you to Prince David Osei, our future president, for you know coming here, and giving us such a wonderful time. Thank you. Special thank you also goes to La Palmera Beach Hotel and Afro Lounge for providing us with the space and the drinks to conduct our interviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the link. And if you feel like he hasn't been honest at any point, comment, say something. And we're going to bring him back to answer all the questions. And yeah, guys, if there's anyone else that you wish to see, please comment and say, say something in the comment section. And we'll make sure to bring them. Until next time, guys. What do you Bye. mean by that? What do you mean by he hasn't been honest? Eh, if they feel like you've not been How honest, they should say that. I'm an honest person. But that's that? your, that's your <laughs> plan.